Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Ryan Walker, a construction superintendent from Millstone Township, New Jersey, who finished in 18th place on season 13 of Master Chef, representing the Northeast in the United States of America. Ryan, welcome to Gold Derby. Uh, I want to get right into your elimination because for me, these are some of the toughest when it's a team challenge. You're not even going out on your own dish. You go down grilling pork chops all day in the wind. How difficult was it for you to be eliminated in that way? And yeah, have, have you eaten pork chops since then? <laughs> All right. So I've still been eating pork chops. I actually built myself an Argentinian grill here in the backyard just so I could, uh, you know, grill them just like that day. A little less wind, but um, just kind of do that all the time, you know. But the team challenge thing is tough, man. It, it's tough. It's kind of like, you know, a double sided coin. You're going home on a team challenge. You know, you don't. You don't make every decision that's involved with your dish. You're relying on team members. And then, you know, besides that, just like the elements and, the, you know, the way the challenge was set up and everything, it's tough to go home like that. But it is also nice to go home. You know, it's not like I brought a dish up and they said, you're the worst dish here. You know, right. it's 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 you know, it's a it's a double double edged sword there. You were called forward at the end of the challenge with Bryn and James. And Bryn was the team captain. James was on the grill with you for much of the service. When it came down to the three of you, how nervous were you at that point? I mean, what what did you oh. think the chances were? Oh, I knew I was going home. I knew I was going home. I, I um, you know, going in, going in, I was very strategic going into Master Chef. You know, it's a competition. I kind of had a, this big grandiose plan about you know kind of laying low staying in my comfort zone to the top 10 and stepping it up and then you know going from there and in my head my number one thing was don't take any risks in the team challenges like don't put yourself out there to a point where you know you you could be packing your bags for something that you know is not completely on you but once I saw that grill and you know nothing against my team, but I just, I'm a competitive person and I wanted to win. And, you know, I kind of, um, I took a major, like, you know, the hardest job there in, in cooking those pork chops through. I mean, these are four inch thick, double bone in almost frozen solid chops that I'm trying to, you know, grill a hundred of them in an hour. It's, it's tough, but you know, I, I, I put it all on my shoulders and uh, I didn't, I didn't come out on top, but when they called us up at, at the end, I, I knew, I knew it was me. I knew it was me from a mile away. Ugh, that's rough. Uh, talk about walking into the challenge that day. Cause you arrive in this huge open area and things are like exploding. The fire trucks come in. Uh, what was it like cooking for 101 firefighters and emergency personnel and, and just being there that day, experiencing all of the, that tv show magic you know it was a hot day it was a windy day but you know when you talk about the explosions when you talk about you know these firefighters blue collar guys you talk about open fire grilling i'm i'm right at home like this you know like i grew up blowing stuff up in the in the pit across the street i uh open fire cooking is my favorite way to cook. And, um, you know, blue car, I'm in construction. That's where I'm surrounded by 24 seven. So I, I, I felt comfortable, probably a little too comfortable. Um, so that might've, uh, it might've been a, a bless or a curse in disguise for me there, <laughs> you know, just cause I'm a little too much in my element and, uh, let, let stuff get out of hand there. And as the winner of the previous challenge, Jennifer picked the teams. So she's on a team with, from the South. She decides to partner with the Midwest, leaving the Northeast and West teams together. And your team had already lost Richie the week before. The West had lost Amanda. So you're two team members down in this challenge. Do you think that had the biggest impact on your loss? Or was it the pork chops? Or what do you think was the biggest contributor, contributor to that loss? You know, I mean, being uh, two team members down definitely hurt us because, you know, when I, you know, when I started to get in trouble there, it's not like, you know, we had extra hands to just pull off something else. So I was kind of a little bit, you know, trying to take on a brunt of the work there just because we were two, two team members down. But, I mean, if we had, if we were, 
two members down grilling New York strips on that grill, it would have been a whole different ball game because, you know, a New York strip going medium rare and trying to cook those super thick pork chops all the way through. I mean, it's, it's night and day in considering the difficulty of it. So I do think that the two team members down hurt us, but um, if we, if we, if we had that strip and the other team had the pork chop, we would have, uh, we would have came out on top for sure. Did they get first choice of that because of Jennifer or could you have both chosen steak? I mean, what was, what was that decision to, to do the pork chop? Um, you know, you have, you have a few options there and they, um, they had first choice with the, with the New York strip. Um, we had, we had a couple options, but, um, you know, I, I, it's not like, it's not like the options are in front of you. So when you, when you're thinking pork chop on a, on a challenge like that, you know, I'm thinking maybe a couple inches thick, maybe one bone, but, uh, then you, you know, you open up, you open up your fridges to see what you're working with. And, uh, that, that double bone, real thick chop was not was not what I wanted to see there. Well, let's go back to the very beginning because you had one of the most memorable auditions of the season. You were the last contestant shown on the premiere episode, and you were very open about sharing that you'd been overweight, you battled addiction, and you decided to turn your life around. So tell us about that light bulb moment for you in your life. When did you decide to make that change, and how did cooking then become sort of the passion for you yeah so i mean it wasn't like a uh you know it was a build-up it, it was just a build-up i mean when you're you're in that you're in that dark place for 10 years and um you know just just things start to build up and build up and build up and and one day it was just i just reached my breaking point i had some you know losing jobs burning bridges some dark thoughts personally and uh you know eventually i just i just you know snapped and kind of it was the first time i ever did it's not like i quit before and relapsed or anything like that it, it just one day i just snapped and made the decision and uh you know after i after i initially got sober um you know i wasn't I wasn't satisfied. I wanted to keep getting better. So, um, you know, I started losing weight and I did a keto diet to lose weight and I started to fall in love with food as I'm getting sober. Now I'm doing keto. So I'm so limited on foods, but Hey, if you cook them yourself, then all your options are open. So that's how I started cooking. And then it, uh, blossomed from there into a passion, obsession, hopefully a profession. Yeah. <laughs> how did you decide on that? audition dish you it was a, a take on steak and eggs and you got yeses from gordon joe and daphne Aron was a little tough on you um but how did yeah. you decide on how did you decide on that specific dish yeah i i, I lost a lot of respect for Aron on that one I mean, <laughs> you you cannot like the dish but what he his reasoning and what he had to say for not liking it was totally absurd um but uh, how did I decide on the dish? So steak and eggs is, um, you know, it's the centerpiece of my diet. It's the centerpiece of my cooking. Um, I've literally cooked hundreds of steak and egg recipes. So I've developed my own egg techniques. I used egg techniques from around the world. Um, same with the steak. And it kind of like, you know, allowed me to go and find this little niche to branch into different cultures and the way they cook and the way they prepare their meals. And um, so steak and eggs is my main thing. And that's like, out of all my, you know, 100 plus steak and egg dishes, that's, uh, that's like, probably, I mean, it's definitely my top three, um, probably, probably my favorite. Um, so, you know, no matter, I mean, I, I went home extremely early for my liking, but, um, you know, being able to uh, cook that dish, my dish, steak and eggs on uh, national TV, I mean, that's a, uh, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity and uh, I'm happy I got it. And it was a pretty emotional moment when you got that white apron. What led you to sort of breaking down? Your family was there. What what were those emotions for you? Yeah, so I, um, like I said, I was, you know, an addict, dark place for 10 years. And then about five years ago is when I first got sober. Oh, sorry there. So I first got sober five years ago and... Um, you know, me and my dad, we went through a lot in that 10 years. And then 
you know, we're building our relationship back over the last five, but we never, we never really hashed it out um, emotionally. You know, we never really had all of our cards on the table like that. Um, I'm kind of still um, a pretty guarded person uh, as far as emotions. And, you know, I'm sure he'd say the same about himself. So, you know, to have that moment um, and to share that moment with him and, uh, you know, my mom watching from home, it was just, um, it was special, man. It's, it's hard to describe um, how much that meant to me and my family and just, uh, it was big. It was big. I, I haven't cried in like five, six years. Now, <laughs> every time I watch the episode, I'm like tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> So what is life for you like now? Are you pursuing a career in the culinary world? Are you still enjoying that? Um, is that is that still the dream? I mean, I can see your oasis looks very relaxing and wonderful. You look comfortable. Um, so what? So what's the dream? So um, I've been, I didn't go back to my construction job when I got back. Um, so I've just been going all out on my social media stuff. I'm still posting to the cooking at keto account, but my big thing right now, that's actually starting next week. I, uh, I just spent months building this huge out. Me and my dad built this huge outdoor kitchen by hand. I wish I could show it to you. I'm sitting at it right now. Um, but we built this thing and I got, you know, I got a Blackstone hibachi. I got my propane, my big Argentinian, I got deep fryer. So I'm going to be hosting a, um, a concept run for my restaurant the rest of the summer. Um, so very small, intimate groups, um, just tasting menu, seven dishes, a bunch of desserts. <laughs> but um, that's what I'm going to be doing the rest of the summer as a, you know, a concept run for my restaurant. I want to open up a farm to table restaurant uh, here in Jersey. So um, that's kind of the deal. So I've been, you know, I got the chickens, I got the garden, I got my trays of microgreens, I got um, a butcher with excellent sourcing, sourcing um, right over in Spring Lake, a few minutes away from me. So, you know, that's that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm putting uh, all my all my eggs in this basket right here. And uh, but after that, I want to do some personal chef stuff and uh, hopefully get some investors on board with my little concept run this summer and and go from there but I'm, I'm definitely staying in the um food health wellness this is um you know I, I liked construction I was good at it but this is this is what I'm meant to do this is this is my passion it's everything for me sounds fantastic we're happy to hear that and Ryan I was disappointed to see you go out like that those team challenges are tough but what an accomplishment to make the top 20 happy for everything you're doing now and congratulations uh best of luck to you moving forward and thanks for joining Gold Derby today. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.